Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the DiffServe Aware TE COS Learning Byte. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the example. So we need to configure the routers that we see in this network on the bottom left. There are four PE or provider edge routers, that's PE1 through PE4, three core routers, which are P1 through P3. And what we need to do here is we need to configure class of service with diff server where TE with the parameters we see on the slide. Now note that all links are one gigabit per second links. So the first thing we need to do is we need to configure CT0 to use Q0, forwarding class best effort, bandwidth, remainder of the bandwidth that's left over. CT1 needs to be Q1, forwarding class data, bandwidth 500 megabits per second. CT2 uses Q2, forwarding class voice, bandwidth 300 megabits per second. CT3 uses Q3, forwarding class net control, bandwidth 50 megabits per second. And one thing to keep in mind here is what you configure on one router is what you're going to configure on the rest of the routers. So with that, we're just going to configure and focus on PE1 because if we configured all the routers, it would just be a repeat. And for the sake of time, we're gonna just keep it down to just the one router as far as configuring this because there still is a lot to configure. And the other thing I don't have listed here on the slide is I do want to show you how to put traffic into those specific queues. And to do that, we'll configure some multi-field classifiers under PE1. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI. All right, so here is the PE1 router. Let's jump into configuration mode. Go to class of service. And I've pre-configured the classifiers and rewrite rules just for the sake of time, since this is a learning byte. And so just take a quick look at what these look like and keep in mind that we will be using these rewrite and classifiers on the interfaces. So let's go ahead and first configure the actual schedulers. So the first scheduler that we need to configure, let's configure the best effort scheduler. And this is going to have a transmit rate of remainder and buffer size. Can't type. There we go. Buffer size of remainder. And we're going to set this priority to low. Now, in the parameters for the case study, for the example, I didn't say anything about the buffer size or priority because as far as diff server wear is concerned, it doesn't really see those things. So just keep that in mind. Okay, then we're going to set the data scheduler to have a transmit rate of 50 percent 50 and that's going to give it the 500 megabits per second that we need for that data forwarding class i'm going to set the buffer size we'll just set that to a percent of 50 and set the priority to let's say medium low okay then we're going to set the voice transmit rate to 30 percent and we're going to set the buffer actually we're going to set the uh yeah well yeah the buffer size Set that to temporal 50 microseconds. And we're going to set that priority to, let's say, medium high again. And then we're going to set the net control transmit rate to percent of 5. Buffer size, same thing, 5. We're set that priority to high. Okay, so those are our schedulers. Now, the thing to keep in mind is the schedulers determine how much bandwidth is going to be applied to a CT. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a scheduler map that maps these schedulers to a forwarding class. And then we'll map those forwarding classes to specific queues, which then automatically maps it to the CT. So to do that, we can go under scheduler maps. Call this DSTE-map. Set forwarding class. Let's say best effort. Scheduler, best effort, data, scheduler, data, voice, scheduler, voice, and net control, scheduler, net control. And so that maps our schedulers to a forwarding class. And now we need to set our forwarding classes map them to a specific queue. So Q0 is going to map to, oops, I did edit, uh, which edit under 40 classes, there we go. Q0 is going to map to best effort. Q1 is going to map to data. Q2 is going to map to voice. Q3 is going to map to net control. 
So that's how that'll map. And then the mapping from the Q to the CT is automatic. Q0 always goes to CT0, Q1 always goes to CT1, Q2, CT2, Q3, CT3. So we don't need to map that part. But that'll allow us to map it together. And I do want to activate the classifiers. Classifiers I deactivated, yep. Activate the rewrite rules. Because now we need to configure the actual interfaces. And we're going to use the shortcut of all, so it's just all the interfaces on the box. Scheduler map, we need to apply that scheduler map. DST map, set unit, set all unit zero. So all interfaces, unit zero, we need to set our classifiers now. And then we need to set our rewrite rules. And so there we go, we have that set. And now we can commit that configuration. And then what we can do now is we can look at the TED database or the traffic engineering database that is, and see how this applies. Do the router ID for PE1, use the extensive command, and we can see some information here. We can see that, now how this is mapped is, well, before I, before I do that, let's look at the TE class matrix. And we can see here that CT0 is mapped to two different TE class matrix, uh, matrices, that is, TE classes, that is, uh, TE0 and TE1, depending on the priority, and CT1, T2, TE2, TE3, CT2, TE4, TE5, and CT3, TE6, TE7. So that's how that is mapped. So then, if we do that last command again, the TED database command, we can see here the different CTs, first of all, are mapped out. We have CT0, 150 megabits per second. That's what's left over because that's the remainder. Remember, best effort is mapped to CT0. And then CT1, which is data, has 500 megabits per second. CT2 has 300 megabits per second. That's voice. CT3 has 50 megabits per second. That's net control. So that's how that mapping works out. And then you can see above that the different TE classes. You see 150, 150, that's CT0. 500, 500 for TE2, TE3, that's CT1. TE4, TE5, 300 megabits per second, that's CT2. And 6 and 7, TE6 and 7 are mapped to CT3. Okay, so you can see how class service is configured and how the CTs get their bandwidth reservation from that. And then it maps into the traffic engineering classes as well. So the last thing we need to configure is the actual multi-field classifier. So that's just going to be on a firewall. It's just a firewall filter. We're going to be doing family INET for this. The filter name, we're just going to call this DSTE-MC. And then we just need to set different terms. For example, we can say set term, say just term one, lack of a better idea. We can say from because we're going to match on multi-fields, hence why this is called a multi-field classifier. Source address 192.168.11.0 slash 24. We're just going to say anything that comes in with that source address. We're going to do something with it. Set term one, then forwarding class, best effort. And then we can set term two from source address uh, 112.0 slash 24. And then we can set term two, then and we specify the forwarding class. Forwarding class, say this is a data forwarding class. And then we can say set term three from source address 192.168.13.0. And then we can say set term three, then forwarding class voice. And we could continue on. We could set one for the network controller if we're worried about that, but we're not in that situation. And so this is configuring the multi field classifier. And then we need to go to the interface and apply it. Now this is going to be an interface that points towards the CE1 device. I don't have that on the, the topology, the CE1 device, but PE1 connects to CE1 on, uh, I believe it's GIGI1. Yeah, it's, it is uh, GIGI1. And so set g-0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 0 family inet filter input, and then whatever we call that. We call that DSTE MC. And then commit that configuration. And then what we'll want to look at, we first will actually Clear the interface statistics for all the interfaces. Uh, I wanted to run show queue, I believe. No, it's interface queue. So this is going to be the interface that's pointing towards P1. So this is the, the Gigi 000 interface in that regards. 
and we look at the different statistics, we see nothing's going through the queue right now. Do have some net control stuff flowing a little bit. And so what we want to do is we want to create some traffic to send through, say, like the voice queue, for example. This will send traffic through the voice queue. Okay, but first we actually need to set up some LSPs. That will be helpful. We need to set up an LSP. So let's say PE-1, 2, PE-3. Oh, I need to type it out, right? Call this voice 210.10.100.3. Uh, we'll say bandwidth CT2. So we're mapping this to CT2. And then we'll give it one megabit per second. And so let's go ahead and commit that first, and then we can actually send traffic through it. Let's see if that's up yet. It is up. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and send traffic through that. Okay, we're sending traffic through it. So let's look at the actual queue now. And that previous command was sending traffic from CE1 to CE3. And so it's going from, that traffic will be going through the, the LSP PE1 to PE3 voice LSP. And so we want to actually look at the queue for that interface. And we'll look at the voice queue, forwarding class, voice. And we see we have traffic entering that and going into that queue. And so that's how it works with class of service. We configure the class of service. Apply to the interface, configure the multi-field classifier on the PE device, of course, not the P routers, but the PE1 device, and then traffic gets dumped into that queue. We'll go through that LSP. So that brings us to the end of our learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure diff serverware TE LSPs with costs, and we demonstrated how to verify those LSPs uh, with class of service. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.